there, folks. I'm Emily. And I'm Elle. And this is Oh My Word, a podcast where we talk about pop culture and media, TV shows, books, movies, plays, etc. And review them. Yeah. Sometimes we talk about the books and the movies at the same time. Because that's well, how we roll. And then yes. we have our pearl clutching scale of zero to four for violence, language, and romance. Zero is an excellent score. Four is a terrible score. So this is how we let you know what's what's going on and stuff. We don't well, sometimes we don't know why. <laughs> but this is how we <laughs> let you know about what's going on. So you can then see what it is, hear what it is, and decide if this content is really right for you and yours. Exactly. Because everyone has his or her own opinion about like my parents, for instance, growing up, we could watch stuff that was violent if it was like a war movie, but not if it was gratuitous violence in in a different context we couldn't really watch stuff that had bad language or anything too sexy the first r-rated movie i saw was the patriot but that was okay because it was a movie about the revolutionary war so even though there was violence and it was a little bit gratuitous in certain places it was still within the context of war that's a romance i think that's a gets heavy there. there wasn't much romance in there i mean there's like weddings, but there's not like people sleeping around with each other. Anyway, just like that was a big deal for me. I can still probably count on like two hands the number of R-rated movies I've seen. Anyway, so everyone has to figure out for themselves what. That's because they changed the rating system and they let more things into PG-13 and PG these days, uh... which is part of why we're here <laughs> to help you see through that because we have our own scales. Sometimes, if anything, we skew up and not skew down. Because that's true. That's this is important stuff, and not just oh they're exposed to it anyways. No, no, that's true. Like you're allowed. What is it? You can have the f word once, and it's still PG thirteen. Yeah, and sometimes they'll slip in a second one, and they'll still give it a PG thirteen rating. Meanwhile, you can smoking also now, like cigarette smoking, will bump up a rating. So it's important to look into the ratings for these things and know actually what they mean. And that's why we have our own. We let you know zero is very clean and four is whoo that is too much for us in terms of language violence and romance which romance includes also sex anyway so today we are talking about shadow and bone which is a new netflix series i want to say tv series but i recognize that most people are probably actually watching it on their phone or laptop so it's not really tv so a new netflix series based on the books by leigh bardugo we did previously talk about Leigh Bardugo. We talked about Six of Crows, which is another, it's just a duology, right? That's episode 18. Look it up after this one. Nice plug. So we've already talked about her. We love her. She's a very good author. So they've adapted now Shadow and Bone into a TV series, but the characters from both the Shadow and Bone series and the Six of Crows series are in these books because in the books they do actually cross over at least they all live in the same world so i don't know if they actually run i can't remember if they actually run into each other but i know they exist sort of in the same time in the same place so it's not like a stretch for them to be in the same tv series some of them some of them from the shadow and bone books end up in the six of crow books but officially six of crow takes place three years after shadow and bone so certain characters are not there because it's taking place in a different place in a different whatever so it's the same universe some characters make it over to the new place, but some don't because of the way Shadow Bone ends. And That's right. Loses. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I read all the books, but apparently my reading comprehension was not so high. Well, it makes me read so many books. It's hard to keep all the plots and all the characters straight. There's so anyway. many more trees. <laughs> oh, no. No, I don't complain. She usually has good recommendations, but it is hard to keep some of it straight, especially in a book like this, which is not easily summarized. The important things to know is that there are these group of people called Grisha, and they have magic powers. And in the land where they are, there is a war going on between them and the rest of the people who are not so friendly towards those with magical powers. And then the Six of Crows characters who we talked about, these are the ones who are involved in more of a, they're involved in a heist, but it does involve this war that the Grishas are involved in. So it all comes together and, you know, there's a little bit of, a little bit of romance, there's 
political machinations, there's intrigue and secrecy, and there's crime. It's, it's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, it is it is a teen series on Netflix, which means the ratings are fairly high because that's what Netflix does. It just decides that everything needs to be everything. So <laughs> violence is a three. Language is a three. Romance is a 2.5. So language-wise, they, they, they use the S word so that for us automatically bumps it up to a three. The rest of it is not so bad. They don't go to the F word, which... I at commend least, them for. Yeah, at least, at least that, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But they say damn and bastard. And there, if this is a concern to you, there are in-show racial slurs. So it's not like they're real. But, you know, it's sort of like we talk about with cursing, right? Yeah. That if you're going to do cursing in a book for kids, make up your own word. So that's yeah. kind of what they do. They have their own racial slurs. Um, sex. Scenes take place in a brothel. Characters are sex workers. There are references to sex, but no sex takes place. Though characters do kiss. That we see. Camera. Right. There's off camera. Know. There's male and male off camera. Mm. Um, and then there's almost on camera a male and female. Almost. Gotcha. I guess I haven't, I haven't seen as many episodes. Yeah. I really am enjoying it, but it's just too hard. I can't binge it. There's too much. It's too heavy. Um, and then it's violent, you know, there's war, so there's that kind of stuff, and then there's criminals, and, you know, people are being kidnapped and shot and tortured, and they're also magical creatures that are violent. So, and it's dark. It's one of those shows where yeah. everything just, like, visually, everything just is dark all the time. Yeah, very saturated. You can't see some, yes. sometimes you can't see the actors even. Yes, yes. And it is dark also. The story is dark. Yeah. Also, because right. you have, one of the biggest things is, it takes place in Rafka, or East-West Rafka is divided by this thing called the Fold that was created by this Darkling General. It's just this big block, dangerous block space. In order to go through it, you usually need Grisha to help you go through it. You need soldiers to, to protect you to go through it. If you have to go for a supply run, they're trying to keep, keep the kingdom together. The whole story revolves around we have to get rid of the Fold that's existed for years and years and years, decades and centuries, however long it's existed for, because it's such a dangerous place and it divides the kingdom. So... There's a whole thing about going through the fold, but going through the folds is a very dark place. That's where the magical creatures come to eat people and all that sort of stuff. So you have this one character. She grew up as an orphan and blah, blah, Lena. And it turns out that she's the sun summoner. And the sun summoner can destroy the fold, I guess, because she brings light and the fold is dark or oh, whatever that kind of stuff is. I actually, I didn't read the books on, on Shadow and Bone. I only saw the, the series. And when I first started watching it, because they try to bring in all the characters at the same time, and it's a brand new world, and, and in general, um, these worlds that she, that she builds are very, very complex and very richly imagined worlds, so it's not necessarily so easy for it to all just come over. So in the beginning, I was actually watching everything on Fast Forward, <laughs> because <laughs> it was just, I couldn't sit through, it was almost just too much, there was almost too much going on, and I had to like just get through some of that part, and then once I got to the later episodes, I was able to slow it down and just sit and kind of be in the story at that point, but... There's also a lot of going back. So Alina, who's the orphan, her best friend Mal, who's also an orphan. A lot of they go back a lot. So some people like that, and they, you know, it, that casting is they did a good job on the casting. They did they did a good job in general. In general, they did a good job, but it's still the beginning gets very confusing when they're trying to bring in all the different storylines, especially the six of crow characters who shouldn't be there yet. And they're bringing them in to make up this heist about how they're going to go kidnap Alina for all uh, whatever. So she, because she's the sun summoner, this like long prophecy prophesized about, you know, Sun Summoner, a lot of it gets a little bit much in that the word Sun Summoner is probably said like 14 times in like maybe a two minute span. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but that's that's what happens in general when you have like, the you know, the problem, the promise and the prophecy is being fulfilled sort of, that does happen mm -hmm. sometimes, like it's a little bit much. It almost makes her, she's, she's a good character, but it almost makes her like less interesting than the other characters who are much more, they have more like complexities to them. Like mm. they're not expected to be the hero or the promised child or any of that kind of stuff. So it allows for more like variance and shading in their character. Not because Alina can have it too. She does have her back and forth. It just starts off a little bit naive and it just kind of learns a little bit. It's interesting because even though here the romance is at 2.5 because she almost sleeps with Kerrigan and then you do have the male, male, off screen, whatever. But they keep promising there's going to be more romance in the second season. And it's like, oh, great. I'm going to be skipping through that, too. <laughs> but here's my... Okay, so here's my one thing. 
For example, you have, so Alina comes and they bring her to the palace. They discover that she's a Grisha because as she's going through the fall, to protect, blah, 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 her powers come out. They take her to the, the palace, this little palace where everybody, all the Grisha train. They have to learn how to control the elements. They have to learn all, the, all their stuff, okay? Also, because eventually we learn that Kerrigan is, is, keep, keeps a very tight hold on the Grisha. He wants to have like a Grisha army. So it's, they used to be hunted down. These people used to want to get rid of them because they didn't trust the people, the powers. And now he, because we find out he's actually been alive for more than he looks, <laughs> he created the Grisha to actually raise them up and like elevate mm -hmm. them above the people. So he's kind of the one responsible for all that. But she comes to the thing. So she's been this map maker and this nobody orphan and ignore dirty whatever person. Say, hey, you can't go out like that. You got to have a bath. Okay. So they show her from behind getting stripped down to take a bath. Right? Why do I need to see a naked body? Mm. Because I wouldn't know that that's what was going on. <laughs> These aren't the times. See, this is what we're here for. This is what we're here for. Why does that need to be shown? I don't understand why that needs to be shown. Because yeah. it's so irrelevant. And it's so, this is actually something that I was thinking about that you have um, people talk, oh, like women in their empowerment and blah, 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 whatever. And I remember you actually. Um, someone said this about the Game of Thrones things about how there was one character who like after X amount of seasons she said okay no more nudity no more whatever and I was like yeah what happened to the first seasons because the first season there, she did do the nudity and all that kind of stuff so if you want to have a woman in Power Man and all these sort of things any director that says you cannot have a part unless you take your shirt off any director or any film or writer that says this movie will not sell unless you take the shirt off is not anyone I trust with female respect and Power Man blah 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 any of that kind of stuff Okay, this is one of my rants. First of all, the first woman to take her shirt off with the camera sold everybody else out. Because they couldn't say, no, we will never take our shirt off. Because they said, well, she did. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. People are like, no, my body, my body's my power. Your body's your power. No one should ever be able to tell you to take it off to sell a film. Never. Never. So that's why also when you have this, most of the time, nudity is, is, is unnecessary. You can do false news. There's way around it. We don't have to see it. And try, no, because, we, no, you're not. You're not. Every time you do it, you, are, you objectify. Whether it's a man or a woman, and we know that. That's why the guys have to get all their abs ripped if they're in a chick flick, and they have to take their shirt off because they just work so hard on their abs. And it's there for eye candy. We all know that. People are being objectified. Every time you strip someone down, you're objectifying them. You will hardly ever be able to convince me otherwise, unless maybe it's like a Holocaust film, but like a documentary that you can't not see what occurred. Right. Even in a film when they're acting out, I don't even know that we have to see it then. But definitely for the documentary and your real facts, like, that's real. You can't take that out. But that's why when it's also so irrelevant, why do we have to see her strip from behind? What did you accomplish by making her take her clothes off for the camera from behind? What do you do? And it's actually really funny because that scene, she ends up in the bath and, like, they're trying to wash her. She's like, I can wash myself. And then she gets out of the bath and her face is still dirty. And, then like, a second later, her face is clean. <laughs> Even though she didn't wash her face in the bath. So that was a continuity error. But that really, the second they did it, I was like, why did you pan the camera out? What did you just do there? See, people, we have to pay attention to these things. Anyways, that has nothing to do with the show. <laughs> no, but that's a really good point. And sometimes we talk about not just the show or the book itself, but what it represents. And that's a really good point because... I, th I thought about it, but not quite in the way you did. I did think, why why do I need to see this person who's supposed to be a teenager naked? That makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. You're right. We are so used to, and it was through a kind of a film, right? She's behind yeah. a curtain, so it's not her whole body, so you think it's not a big deal. But you're right. We're desensitized, and people show their bodies. Young people, which is worse, but older people, you know, adults also. Yeah. And it's not empowering. And, you know, we talk about... Harvey Weinstein, who obviously was a terrible person because of things he did for women. But you're right. If a director says you have to undress to be in this movie because it's art, that right. sounds to me, he's not quite Harvey Weinstein, but that's still pretty gross. Yep. You know, yep. and that's, that fits right in with, yeah. So that, that was an excellent point, Elt. Thank you. Very, that's, very good. It's the un, it's the unacknowledged it's the unstated, like, secret, or it's not even a secret. It's, like, the unspoken about truth yeah. of, like, Hollywood and all these films and stuff like that. Someone you had someone took their clothes off at some point. So when they go on, pre people go about preaching about certain kinds of things. It's like, as long as you're doing this, I'm not, I can't trust you with this point as long as you're going to go on doing this stuff. 
and especially when it's so irrelevant. It was so irrelevant. Even when you have, so one of the Six of Crows characters, Jasper, who, who's, for some, they go on their heist thing, and for some reason he ends up making out with the stable hand. I have no idea why that has to happen. And I'm just saying it, oh, but, oh, you want the mail and mail, but no, it was irrelevant. Oh, he had to get the horses out. No, no. <laughs> they, no. Like, why are you putting this stuff in? Especially because, I mean, his character is supposed to be a bit of a player, and a, a, according to the books, he'll, like, sleep with anyone. It's not even, like, he's, like, everything. He's, like, I think he's basically buying in the books. But it's, yeah. it's, it didn't need to be, you have so much going on in the story and in this world. Like, stop bogging it down. You didn't think anyone would watch it if you didn't put that scene in. Everyone was still going to watch this. Anyone yeah. who was interested in watching it was going to watch it. You, it. It didn't need to be there. So this is kind of like, I don't know, maybe just as a storyteller, you know, as a writer, I'm like, what? Why, why are we losing, like, why are we losing the story? Like, why are we not? Yeah, and it's funny because I also have the character of um, Matthias who's the Grisha hunter and Nina, the Grisha girl that he ends up falling in love with, blah, whatever. And all those scenes kind of, because they haven't tied it in yet, it's kind of like, why are these here? Why do you keep cutting out to these scenes? But they also have their mom because they're both freezing, so they have to whatever. And she's all free with her body, and he's very, where he comes from, women have clothed their bodies out of modesty. He's used to the modesty, right? And it's also that sort of thing of like, loosen up, stop being so stiff. Like, what, be comfortable around a girl who's naked? Why? Like, not your wife, not your whatever, like, why? Why? What is it? Oh, now he'll be educated. Now he'll be forward thinking. Why? Why is that Maybe better? Maybe it's more he's respectful not... that he's not comfortable that he wants you to be yes. modest. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's not repressive, but actually empowering. Yeah, that he keeps looking away. You could say there are certain things where he's like, of course women want to stay at home and cook. Like, he does have that line which you could be like, okay, that's a bit much. Sparky, you know, right. calm down. <laughs> but the fact that, like, when she's undressing and he looks away, why is that not a good thing? That should be a good, that's a good thing. It means that I mean, it's part of it's like, oh, I can't for the Grisha, but oh, but part of it's also like a woman's body is not just something to just be staring at and to just be be okay right. with it, just being exposed. Like there is a respect of body thing that's going, and he doesn't want to strip down in front of her either. Yeah. So you can't ask to not be objectified if yeah. you're turning yourself to an object. Yes. Yeah. It's it's there's interesting. Thing. There's definitely. Like these are all these are all things that have n that the film is not about, or like the series is not about. But these are the things that we pick <laughs> up on because this is what you got to do. You got to you got to see what else is going on and not just get lost. We always say this, right? Don't get lost in the lights and the colors of the story. You got to pay attention. Yeah, well, because it's insidious, yeah. and if you don't pay attention to it, then it slowly is in everything. People weren't undressing left, right, and center in the forties, <laughs> or if they, they were, it was off camera at least. Because <laughs> it, true. So, no, I think it's very appropriate to bring that up. And again, this is for yes. teenagers, Yes, this yes. show. So that's yeah. another... And everyone goes back to, to, well, they're mind. exposed to whatever. So stop exposing them. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> they're exposed to it in books and whatever. So stop putting it in there. Because you do Oh, well, they'll yes. find it on the internet. Like, okay, but we don't have to feed it to them. Yeah. Right. Otherwise... <laughs> very well said. I, I think that's an excellent way... To end, I mean that's really the important thing. It's a good show. The story is good. The books are even greater. But I, I think the it's a really well done adaptation, faithful but um, flexible where it needs yeah. to be, and you know good characters, fully rounded. Like you said, the world is very well built, but also it has all of these other things. So then you make the choice: Do you want to watch something that has well rounded characters and a good story? and a good world and doesn't have teenagers undressing <laughs> or do you not care and then and then you know what you get to make the choice but we're just here to give you information and then you get to make your own choice that's all right that's the service yeah we provide. probably don't let younger teens watch it <laughs> and well, you probably, probably don't <laughs> and well it's a little dark and a little scary too and violent and stuff so yeah and you're a lot of your protagonists yeah. are criminals because of the six of crows which we probably spoke about. Episode 18. Episode 18. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. And we'll see you yeah. next time. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe. Leave Star Star reviews. Here's people's. Oh My Word podcast is brought to you by the Pearl Clutching Basement Dwellers at Oh My Word. Follow us on Instagram for updates at Oh My Word podcast or like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For full episode notes and detail, visit eltenabam.com. Music is by Tim Burke. Sound is by Gabriel Yaffe. 
See you next time. Mm-hmm.